You just heard the man himself saying he had a powerful voice. He's an he's a ex-baritone. He used to sing Nesman Dorma. Laurie Drig, Dridge, my uh, friend, and uh, I tell you, one of the legends that I come across when I was doing my uh, Vietnam Veterans Portrait Exhibition, um, Laurie uh, kindly sat for me when I was uh, uh, looking for veterans, and uh, from there I found his uh, very colourful past. Um, some of it is uh, is repeatable, um, but um, you know when we talk about uh, the fact that you've got a a twelve year old who lived in Mount Barker who started to drive an ambulance for his dad who was the medic across there, you knew you were going to be talking to someone who had a story to tell, and um, Laurie is also a Vietnam veteran. Uh, he was um, he was mobbed to Vietnam in nineteen sixty nine and left in 1972 and was um, basically sent to Darwin. And what happened when you uh, got to Darwin, Laurie? Oh, not really much. Um, They just uh, gave us a a debrief, demobbed us, um, and uh, said thank you very much for nothing. You know what I mean? So you're basically left to your own devices. Well, yeah, Yeah, pretty much so, yeah. Yeah. See, so... And it wasn't just you, it was other people oh, several, as well. Right? Yeah, it's a lot of other fellows as well, you know. I think there was 36 of us that demobbed at Darwin at that time. Mm-hmm. I can't be really sure. I can't, you know, it's a bit hard to remember exactly. Yeah, but a few, a few of you for yeah, sure. Yeah, a fair few. We um, we just just sort of stayed at a, a barracks up there in Darwin at that time. I think it was the Air Force barracks mm-hmm. and... Um, uh, when it was time to say, okay, time for you guys to go home, you know, um, a lot of them just had already gone. Yeah. They sort of, I don't know how they did it, but I had no money. I didn't save anything because you don't think about saving it while you're over there. Yeah. And um, so, so anyway, um, so I worked around Darren for a little while doing odd jobs and stuff and I couldn't find much places. I had to leave the barracks because I was not, classified as a military personnel anymore so i had to go and find my own way around darwin so i ended up homeless for a while Mm -hmm. uh, on the street um seriously it was it was shocking um Mm -hmm. i look back on it and think of it did i really do that you know like yeah yeah go along you see a cigarette on the side of the road that somebody didn't finish so you pick it up and you smoke you know And, and it's that's that's getting low. It's yeah, getting yeah. low. And um, you, you'd scab around the bins, around the... you go... We had a chance, went to the back of Darwin Hospital there and sometimes the uh, ladies at the back there would bring us out of feed, you mm-hmm. know, on yeah. the odd occasion. Because, I mean, it wasn't... Um, there was a lot of homeless people, but there was a lot of homeless veterans. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of... <laughs> at that time, there was uh, three of us together... Yeah. We're all on the street together, yeah. All trying to survive. We had a, we had a few um, ups and downs, you know. Um, a few of the Darwinites used to give us a bit of yeah, sh- a bit of sh- yeah. yeah, a bit of shite, you know, yeah. as they say. Yeah, and uh, so you end up in a bit of a fisticuff and stuff. I got I got beaten up a little bit, you mm-hmm. know, but I never hardly ever lost a fight. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's and um, sure. Yeah, so um, yeah, that was it there, and then. Um, yeah, and then Cyclone Tracy came yeah, through. Yeah, that's right, that was 74, yeah. wasn't In it? In 74, yeah, I was there until, yeah, and Cyclone Tracy came through at that time. Um, they said, oh, well, you know, we've got to evacuate, you know, Darwin, you know, we just, and they asked who I was, and I told them, I says, oh, right, you yeah, know, we'll give you a, a free pass. I said, where do you got to go? I says, well, told them where I lived in Mount Barker, mm-hmm. Western Australia. And they said, oh, yeah, no worries at all. They said, uh, we'll get back to you shortly. Just stay here and because mm-hmm. we were all in the shelter at the time because, you know, what was going on. And uh, about an hour later they came back and said, you've got a ticket here to... Uh, get back to Mount Barker. But they couldn't fly any aeroplanes. There was yeah, none coming in because of, you know, what was going on. So they said, it's a bus and there's a, the bus leaves tomorrow morning mm-hmm. and we'll get you down there to the bus and... That's how I got home back to Mount Barker. Yeah. So when you got back, what did your family think? Because obviously it was you. I walked in on my mum unknowingly. Yeah, yeah. I can she imagine. didn't even know. You know, yeah. I was going to tell them, but no, I walked in on mum. First thing she said, 
Oh, you're back from Queensland. <laughs> because Dad wouldn't tell her where I was. Yeah, or anything like that. He kept it. He kept that under his hat. Yeah. He just didn't want to worry Mum. Because I mean, that so. was a, it. Was a dodgy time for a lot of uh, Australians with uh, regards to that. With their, yeah, yeah, with the families and yeah, for sure. Especially when you tell fibs the military to get in. Yeah, of course. You know when you get you know oh uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, but um, yeah. So um, that when I got home that afternoon, it was about I think about four o'clock. It took three days to get there. So we yeah, were sleeping yeah, on the that's bus. Right, exactly. You know, changing from one bus to another bus in one place and from that bus to another bus, and they were shocking buses mm-hmm. back in those days. And, um, yeah, so at about four o'clock um, when I got home and uh, a bit later on there, Mum started cooking and she knows the best thing ever that I loved was the way she cooked cauliflower yeah. cheese. Oh, very good, so, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I had a whole bowl myself, a yeah, whole yeah. lot myself, yeah. So, so. And isn't it funny, though, I mean, after everything, that's the one thing, the first, one of the first things you remember, right, is mm. is something as homely as a, as a bowl of cauliflower cheese is, yeah. is fantastic, yeah. right? It was awesome, it was yeah. awesome, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, but uh, mum never knew exactly what I was doing, but I got, because it took a while to get out to the farm because I, I had to hitchhike. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the bus drops you off in town, so I got to hit you out to the farm. So, so I got a lift with a bloke. He just driving through, so mm-hmm. he gave me a lift out there. He got off, walked up to the farm. Yeah, so yeah. I stayed on the farm for a while. Worked, you know, worked there. Dad and mum and that, and pick mulberries and chase the geese and yeah, the sheep yeah. and you know whatever. You know. So there must have been another calling for you though, because I know in in seventy five you ended up going to Africa to work with the United yeah, Nations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, I mean, surg- the surgeon that was working in Vietnam at the time that I was there, because I was a medic, um, I had a technique of uh, patching holes, <laughs> and which was a bit unusual, but um, I what? ended up getting the name Doc Med. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the reason being is because I, I couldn't figure out, because I got in trouble once when one got wounded, I actually put a life shell in the hole and and bandaged it up. Yep. And, yeah. Yeah, bandaged it up. And, um, yeah, I got in trouble for that because I said, you can't send them back with a live round in them, you know. So I said, what the hell am I going to do? I just can't stick, you know. So and then I, I crossed my mind about something about um, the uh, wonderful nurses and everything that were over there at the time thinking, you know, there must be something I can use. Yeah. And, um figured out of meds, the ladies. Yeah, of course, like um, sanitary protection. Yeah, sanitary protection, if you yeah. want to call it that yeah. way. Um, and the first time I put one in, one of the, in a wound, that um, I thought, oh, wow, it worked. Yeah. So I did it with everything. And the, uh, the surgeon, the people at the uh, receiving station for the wounded to fix them up, and one of the guys that worked there was the surgeon, and um, he came to Australia to track me down. Wow. Yeah. yeah. He come driving up our driveway at the farm, and yeah. I'm wondering, who the hell's this? And the guy talks to me, Mum, and then Mum tells him where I was, and he drives down, there's me and Dad, and he comes up, and then I realised who he was. He was the surgeon. From, yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, doctor, whatever you want to call him, and... Uh, he asked me straight out and he said, listen, I'm looking for a, a guy with your talent to work on one of our medical teams mm-hmm. that we've putting up. And they, t- they took you to some exotic places. Oh. Let's, exotic let's ain't the that. word. Yeah, so I've got a list of them here, right? And Have you? Uh, yeah, yeah. So Rhodesia, mm-hmm. Rwanda, the Congo, mm-hmm. Angola, Sierra Leone. Yeah. All of the romantic Places. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely <coughs> great tourist places. Mm-hmm. Now, so how, how long did you spend out in those uh, areas? Well, in the areas alone, um, it depends on how much you can get done. Yeah. You know, um, treating the people, because when they come through in the thousands, you know, you, you, you can't spend time on them, mm-hmm. you know, like you would normally. Mm-hmm. So it's a very quick process. Is It's called the coloured card. Yeah, of course, know? yeah. yeah. So depending on the coloured card is what area they go to. Mm-hmm. So 
So that was the way of triaging back then, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was a lot quicker, a lot easier. Yeah, yeah of course know. it was. Yeah. And there's exactly. a lot of us, a lot of medics here, yeah, yeah. a lot of team people. So yeah, mm-hmm. I wasn't the only one. There'll be thousands of people out there that um, the United Nations would have have at least eighty to a hundred thousand people. Yeah, you know. I think I think it, when we when we look at um, the history, mm-hmm. and then you come back to Australia. Mm-hmm. You set up a business in Kalgoorlie. Yeah, well, I had the business was in uh, Fremantle at the start, oh, but right, it wasn't okay. doing very good. Yeah. And um, so I said to my son, I said, you know, you know take the gear. So he took the gear. Uh-huh. went to Kalgoorlie. He's fully qualified boilermaker, engineer, designer. Mm-hmm. He's got everything organised. He knows. He's been running the show up there for years. Yeah, right, good. That's, so, yeah. that's Corey, right? It's Corey, my yeah. son, yes, yes. Amazing, amazing young fella. Uh-huh. i got my other son, Laurie. He runs the, yeah. he l- manages the car wash that mm-hmm. we've got in Kalgoorlie as well oh, on Annan Street. So how did you how did you get into, I mean, I know you, you gave that, um, oh, the opportunity to Corey. Corey went to Kalgoorlie. But you started doing your own boil, boiler making and welding and fabrication. No, no boiler making. I'm no a boiler blacksmith, a right? Blacksmith, all right. Blacksmith. Okay. Okay. Keep me right, keep me right. Started in the farm. You start... Working with steel as, yeah. as young as five yeah. on a farm because you've got to know what to do. You've got to drive tractors. Mm-hmm. You've got to help with the sheep and all. And a five-year-old, you know, and I was pretty tough for a five-year-old, you know. And, um, yeah, I took it took it straight in, just got into it. Um, and Dad said, look, you know, uh, the plough's broken. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. And you watch him, how he welds and everything. Yeah. And yeah. back in those days, they didn't have these fancy quick fade mask or anything. It's all the old-fashioned welding helmets mm-hmm. and they were massive too big for my little head, but I still watched to see how he's doing it. Yeah, of course. And, um, yeah, and learnt to fabricate. You had to, you can't just run down the shop and buy what you need. Yeah, that's You've right. You've got to make, make it yourself. yourself. Yeah. So Dad <clears throat> said, think, always think outside what you're doing mm-hmm. and expand on, you know, and um, that's what got me into it. And um, so I just kept doing metalwork, metalwork, even... When I was trying to go to school, I did metal work. Um, yeah. Did you, did, did you find it was a release? It gave oh, you something yeah. to focus oh, on. Oh, yeah, especially when I had the hammer in my hand and yeah, there was I a forge imagine. there yeah. and had the fire going, heat up a bit of steel and make stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, filigree steel, make spear heads and make, you know, just make knives and swords mm-hmm. and stuff. You, you and just that, and, but that then progressed... To bigger pieces. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because I know that um, I, w- I was just uh, reading on um, on Google, mm. Dr. Google told me, that uh, you were um, you brought some replica missiles across from Kalgoorlie to Perth. Well, and they called you the Rocket Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that was uh, an amazing um, incident, that yeah. incident, that one. Um, um the totally partially disabled veterans who I am a member of. In Bell Divers. Um, in Bell Divers, yep. yes. Um, they've got a front entrance and it's not really very fancy or anything like that. Yeah. It's, you know, and uh, I thought, you know, I've got to have something there, you know, on each side of the little thing they got at the front of the entrance mm-hmm. there. So I thought, yep, yeah, harpoons. Yeah. I have to make some of those. So I went all the way to Kalgoorlie. <laughs> Yeah, it took a few trips up and back to when doing it, and um, I uh, drew up these harpoons that I got the uh, plans off the internet, of which most you people do, yeah. do you yeah. know. <coughs> um, but uh, the the size of them, you know, I thought, oh, they're man, massive, you know, harpoons. I maybe have to try something a bit smaller. But mm-hmm. I said, like, no, nah, I'll stick with the harpoons. Yeah. So I went to Kalgoorlie, I had it all in my head. I just did a chalk drawing on the steel bench, went across to the uh, metal scrapyard that was over there and grabbed a yeah. big piece of old rusty chunky pipe, brought it over and started work. Yeah. Mm. And, I mean, we, we, you know, but people have to understand, and I'm sure they'll Google now, is it what a harpoon is? Because this was essentially, back in the day, the guided missile of the that's day. That's correct, right? a harpoon missile. Yes, yeah. that's right. So it wasn't just a um, something that was little, and, and it, it was a fairly chunk. One point eight meters high. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. But then you went on to another project because you managed somehow to procure the drawings of a mini submarine f- 
from the UK and you built that as well. Yeah, um, I actually did that before the harpoons. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, what it was was I went uh, went on to uh, the internet to see if I could find um, like a mini sub, you know, to see what I could build, you know, to put in the memorial garden at the club at that time. And um, I couldn't find nothing, so I had to sort of join a... Uh, a group in yeah, UK yeah, of course. as uh, the military, uh, the English Military Information Centre. All right, and I went through it, and uh, I found that uh, I could could see the submarine. I could see pictures of it on the thing, but I I couldn't get measurements or anything like that. So um, it was very hard, and um, then I had to I emailed the place and I asked them, I said, how can I procure the plans to make a replica of the mini submarine? And they sent an email back, said those mini submarines were used by the Secret Service of England, Yeah. okay, uh, for frogmen to um, to sneak into the harbours during the Second War. Yeah, that's put, right. To put uh, like limpet mines on, limpet stuff. Mines on yeah, ships. Yeah. <clears throat> they said the nose of them, of these mini subs, was also an explosive where they could unhook it and drive back out under a, and leave the big one part no, nose there. Mm-hmm. Or they could turn the trigger around and just swim back and let the submarine continue yeah, on yeah, yeah, to course. hit like a normal like a torpedo. torpedo. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the torpedo submarine, six metres long. Yeah. Okay. Uh, single drive prop had had special, those had funny, like, alkali add this to it to make the, the batteries to run the engine, yeah. Yeah. which drove it, and it had ballasts and that, so you could go up and down in it underwater. And it was so hard, I couldn't get the plans. I just yeah. kept trying, yeah. trying, yeah. trying. So I actually asked the military how I could get the plans, and they says, oh, the plans are available because... It's been 50 years. Yeah, so it's see, official So the plans secrets, are available, yeah. you know, but you've got to buy them, see. So I said, all right, how much is that going to cost me? And they said, um, £100. Yeah. And I thought, £100? Oh, that's 100 bucks. And then I realised the money exchange rate. So, yeah, see, so yeah. that was extra, yeah. yeah. So anyway, they sent the plans to me and um, when I got the plans, I just continued on. See, mm-hmm. so I, I went through to the scrapyards all through Kalgoorlie and that. And uh, found everything I needed. We cut and shaped all this. Yep. Did that and built the submarine, mini two-man torpedo yep. submarine. And the, the beauty of these as well, just for anybody who wants to visit them, it's the permanent and... Dis- totally partially, totally disabled, disabled partially veterans um, club. It's 160, 1677. Yep. Old Manger Road, right. Bell Divers. That's right. And when you go into it, it... You've got the submarine one side and the missiles the other side. Is yeah, that right? As you drive up the driveway, yeah. the harpoon missiles, that's the front entrance under yeah. the big tree there. There's two harpoons yeah. standing up there. Yeah. And then you've got the it's submarine. And as you're driving side. up, just a bit onto your left is uh-huh. the submarine. Yeah. yeah. Now, also, I know that um, you fire fire the cannon yes. for the uh, remembrance or the Anzac Day every year. Yeah. And there was video of the, 1990, uh, nine, the 2019 um, c- a commemoration, mm. and I saw you on on again on YouTube. Yeah. Um, uh, how does that go? How? Uh, what was the reaction to people when you turn up with a, a cannon? Well, they thought um, they had, a lot of them were just dumbfounded. Yeah. They're like, wow, a cannon, yeah. bang! Whoa, well, I'll be back next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the thing about mm. it as well is that um, I know that you got um, commissioned to build another one. Yeah, I did. I got commissioned. What happened with that? Because well, it got, wasn't a good story. I got story. commissioned to build a what they call a one third replica. Yeah. Okay, of a how it's a one i five. Yeah. And um, I started building it, and um, I get a phone call from the a, a person who told me about the commission of it. And they were waiting to get a uh, a grant because mm. they didn't want to put it out of their own pocket. So they're waiting to get a grant. So I thought, oh well, we know we're going to get the grant. They reckon so. Yeah. So I started building this cannon, and um, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. 
about uh, six weeks ago they pulled out. Yeah. And um, I was more than on halfway. Yeah. Mm. And that's cost you money as well. Oh, yeah. You know, I've put I've put at least five grand. Yeah. You know, the Canon was going to cost around about 7000 yeah. to build, yeah. but I was only going to charge them 5000 mm-hmm. Um CISO, but uh, yeah, so now, nah, CISO, I've nearly finished it all up, mm-hmm. but I'm going to take it to me, take it with me. Yeah, and this is what we want to talk about yeah. now, because all of this, the backstory is fantastic, which we know, but we, you're here for a specific reason. Yes. And that is essentially, we want to talk about Vietnam's Veterans Day mm-hmm. on the 18th of August, and you've got something special happening then, which is going to include the canon as well. That's so, correct, yeah. So what's happening? Well, Vietnam Veterans Day, well, good day, <clears throat> gets all us fellas <clears throat> back together. In 26th of July 2019, a certain person by the name of Owen Farmer, who was a homeless advocate, yep. came up to me. I'd already met Owen a few times before. The first time I met him was at an Anzac ceremony. Yeah, right. Okay, and he saw me a bit upset, and he was the only one who won't come over and actually, yeah, you know, and that's how I first met him. That was six six odd years ago. Yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, um, he came up to me and said, "Laurie, he said, you got any ideas of what we could do for the homeless veterans?" And I said, "Oh, I have no idea." He said, "Well." What about a statue? I said, oh, that could be an idea. So we looked around and saw these artist peoples and these crafty peoples who does these brass statues and stuff like that. And we went and saw a bloke, showed him the plans of what we wanted and all that sort of stuff because we just do a sketch and this is what yeah, we think yeah. we might go down the lines of. And the guy says, oh, well, it's going to cost you $50,000 down and it'll cost you $100,000 for the statue. Well. And we said, no way, in part from the few expletive words that yeah. I said, you know, we walked out of there quite disappointed. Yeah, yeah I, can, uh, I can imagine. Yeah, that this so-called person who's a member of the community and, mm-hmm. you know, wouldn't even come to the party with, you know, so I said to Owen, forget it, I'll figure something out. So one day I said, look, Owen, I'm going to build a statue. I'll build it myself. Yeah. And he said, how are you going to do that? And I said, I'm going to build it out of scrap. Yeah. And it's the best way to go, scrap, because there's so many different shapes and sizes in scrap. He said, we'll be able to make something. But the, the very use of scrap is a metaphor for the way that the homeless veterans... You picked up keep, on that right? very well. And and that, and that to me was because well, I've seen it obviously, but not in its finished uh, state. But when I saw it, it just was it looked phenomenal. Well, because a lot of the veterans that are on the street are treated like scrap. Yeah, that's why I decided to use recycled material yeah. because I want to recycle those homeless veterans back into society mm-hmm. if I could. Um, Owen does a great job doing yeah, that. He's yeah. done it. He's done many many veterans of been saved by Owen, yeah. getting them into places. And so we decided, we sat at my place and said, yep, that's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. So on the 26th of July, 2019, I got the welder out and I got the bits and pieces of scrap that yeah. I'd been collecting and started putting it together. That's two years in the making. Mm. Now, you did all of this from memory or, or did you... Out of my head. Out of your head, yeah, Out exactly. of my head, That's just it. out of my head. This is what it looks like. Yeah. This is what I think. This is what I want. Mm-hmm. This is how I'm going to do that. That's the one that needs this, it needs that. Mm-hmm. And uh, the wife comes out now and again with a cup of tea. She's so supportive. That yeah, I'll yeah. tell you, I'll, I'd be lost without her. Yeah. Um, it comes out with a cup of tea, take a break, sit down, you know. As you know, I'm a patio. There's a lot of room out there. But yeah. But yeah. So we'd sit down at the little table and <laughs> yeah. have a cup of tea and a quick chat, you know, and then after that I'd go back and start welding or cutting or whatever, shaping this and shaping that and um, putting it all together. Mm-hmm. You know? And um, it's, uh, it's a feat in itself because mm-hmm. I just really didn't. Owen wasn't allowed to see what I was doing. Well, nobody was, I suppose. No, because I wouldn't even let Owen. Yeah, he, that's he, right. He, him and I, are fi- he and I were 50-50 in this yeah, project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I wouldn't even let him come around the house to have a look at it. 
you know. I said, no, 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 no. Just yeah. leave. It's all right, mate. I've got to go and I've got to go and it's working, you yeah. know, because he wanted to. He kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And I got to a certain stage, just says, oh, all right, I might as well let him come around. Yeah. So he came around and had yeah. a look at it. When he came around, his, his mouth dropped to the floor. Yeah. His eyes beamed out of his head. Mm-hmm. I have not seen a facial expression like that except for the fact when I saw a gentleman who fell out of an aeroplane without a parachute on a film where his face was so explosive of yeah. emotion. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And it, the thing is, with regards to the statue itself, the way that you've positioned it, he isn't... Asking for a handout. No, he's put his hand up for a helping hand. Correct, exactly. He and hasn't again, got... that is just speaks volumes. Oh, of I said to myself, I said, no, nah, I'm not going to make it so he's begging because mm-hmm. that's not the whole point. The point is he's sitting there, mm-hmm. he's got his blanket of protection over him, mm-hmm. he's got his hat in front sitting on his feet. Yep. That, is, that is there to show respect and keep your hat off yep. for people who come past. Or come up and shake your hand. Yeah. And because I couldn't make the hat movable, I had his hand in the position so that you can actually shake yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Right? And because and that's when I saw it was it when mm. it was ready mm. to get uh, galvanized and yep. and painted and stuff. But yes, uh, yeah. And I, I picked up on that straight away. Yeah, yeah. See, so the whole idea is once he's unveiled, somebody people can go up to it. Yeah. And shake its hand. Yeah. And say good day, mate. You know, yeah. this is you know how 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 I look at it. And what what would be nice as well is that over time, the more people that shake his hand, the more not tarnished, but the more yeah. the 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 coating is going to start to look worn, which is great because then it's like brass, right? You know, yeah. every once in a while people that's touch correct. it, yeah. so that's going to be great as well. So you've got the um, you've got the unveiling. I know that you've put the statue on the plinth and it's in place now, but it's covered, which that's is correct. Great. Yes. Um, so what's the the next step. The next step. Well, on the eighteenth, around yeah. about half past eleven, yeah. after they had the morning service at eleven for Vietnam Veterans yep. Day. Um, Sorry, mate. This is at the Rockingham Rockingham sub branch RSL. RSL on Memorial Drive. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are going to be uh, starting around about five minutes to twelve. Um, hopefully, we don't know exactly know how many people we're going to have, but we're going to have definitely have a piper. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have some military personnel. Um, we're going to get them to uh, start the piping um, around about 12 o'clock and uh, start marching down. Um, they'll come around in front of all the people that are on the grass area, on the chairs and all. Um, and then the, the military personnel will gather around the soldier, around, yeah. the, vet, around the statue. Uh, the piper will continue on from there up to the... Um, the gazebo there on the grass line or the band itself, you know. And um, then the MC is going to stand up and start the process of the unveiling. Now, as far as the MC is concerned, you've got uh, Ron Peace is going to be That's the, correct, the MC. That's yep. correct, Ex-Air Force, 50 yeah. years, I believe. Yeah, because he was one of the um, the ex-military uh, guys who sat for me in the uh, the veterans exhibition as well, so I met him yeah. and his family. Yep. Lovely, yep. lovely family. So he's going to do the microphone work because um, I tell you, I, I've got no idea. They all ask me to set up a running sheet, see, so everything can run, you know, yeah, to the I program. Know, I, I remember I, that, yeah. Yeah, I just did not know how, see, so yeah. on the, we've, we've worked something out. There's, yeah. there's a few things. It'll all be set up. It's all going to be going together. Yeah. Uh, and the Rockingham RSL are going to put food on. Yeah. Okay, there's going to be food available. Um, as far as free drinks concerned, that's uh, neither here nor there. This yeah, no, that's, that's no free drinks, you know. Otherwise, people are going to overdo it, and yeah. it's you know, I it's don't not, want it's that. Not what it's, about, it's not, anyway. it's not what it's about. It's not what it's about. You right. know, um, we've invited a lot of dignitaries. A lot can't come because of COVID. Um, some of the Eastern States people uh, want to come over. They said, uh, but they of might course, yeah, come over right. and do the two weeks quarantine to just to be here just for to the statue here, yeah. unveiling. Yeah. And I thought, wow. Yeah. But what, what people have to understand as well is that um, this statue, the homeless veteran statue, yeah. is the first one in the world. I mean, this is not something that's just been um, a, a replica of somewhere else. That's I mean, right. You no. have literally built the first homeless veteran statue in history, mm. right? Mm. And it's here in Rockingham. Yes. It's amazing, I it know. It is, yeah. yes. I wanted to... 
I wanted it to be something that nobody else has ever done. I love doing that. Yeah. You know, I never thought I could do it. Pardon me. I um. I set out just to make a statue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not realizing that when we did some research, there's nothing out there. Yeah, of course. Not a damn thing. Everywhere in the world, veterans all around the world. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are homeless. But I tell you, I didn't realise that, did you know, the last count that I found from the guys in England, there was 450 military veterans on the, on streets. the streets. Yeah, yeah. And that's only in the one spot. Yep. And that was London. Yeah. Itself, just in London alone. Mm-hmm. America, 46,000 people yeah. in Washington State <laughs> alone are homeless. Yeah. 6% were veterans. Australia, yeah, let alone, just alone, our little ta- part here in Rockingham, we had, I, I can't remember, I lost count at five. Mm-hmm. And I'd met a couple of them because Owen used to take me with him, used to go out and see them, mm-hmm. you know, to get help these veterans you know sometimes we give them money sometimes we give them food whatever yeah. we can at the time we we try to help them you know and it's 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 amazing the fact that yeah okay we've got a few of the veterans off the street um big oh, owen's just got a talent to do that i don't know how he does it but he's yeah. just he's got something in his head that he says he knows how to do this yeah. right so so and that's why i admire the guy mm-hmm Quite rightly so, by the way. Oh yeah, I, I, he he's really he really is my adopted brother. I, yeah. I just have to say yeah. that he's I just he's he's family. Mm-hmm. You know that's end of story. Mm-hmm. And we've <clears throat> been fifty fifty in this statue, so that people can understand that there are veterans on the street, mm-hmm. and hopefully when they see this, they say, "Wow." Just don't look at that person as just nobody because they do. They ignore yeah, them. They right, see exactly. them there. They used to ignore them. Yeah. Because they, because they don't look at the person and ask the question, no. why? Right? Why they just are they, think, they just oh, think, they're just a lazy yeah. bastard on yeah. the street, you know, yeah. dumb, yeah. a bum, just, yeah. you know, you and know scum. Not. That's right. They've all yeah. got stories is, is, and that's the irony behind it all. Well, see, it's like one of the guys that we got into uh, a unit um, who was a homeless veteran. And um, he's just a shy guy. He mm. just nobody ever spoke to him or yeah. asked him, yeah. you know, why are you here? Why don't you get a job or things like that? You don't. They just look at him and say, "Ah, useless," yeah. and just totally ignore them. Yeah. You know. Well, so, so what we'll we'll do because we're going to have to wrap up just now, right? But mm-hmm. uh, we've got Haley Edwards coming in next Friday, same time. I'd like you to come along if you can. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll because obviously we're trying to get as much exposure as possible up until the time. Yeah. Um. I, well, I, I mean, I've told you before, right? I mean, I, I'm blown away by what it is that you, Owen, and Haley as well, because she's representing us, which is yeah. good. Um, and, of course, the RSL have managed to put together, because this is a phenomenal feat. First time in history in the world. Yes. And it needs to be, it needs to be recognised, and hopefully we get the po- politicians there to to put their two pennies in, the, the newspapers, everybody. We need to get this. We're trying to. Yes, We're trying we to. I have. That's right. Uh, I just, I just can't believe that people just haven't called me and yeah. said, you know, look, you know, can we do this? Can we do that? Can yeah. do that? Well, you uh, inspire radio. Yeah. Uh, amazingly, um, you are the second media organisation who have actually asked me. Mm-hmm. Okay, out of all the ones in Australia, Western yeah. Australia. Yeah where this statue is supposed to be going is around the whole of Australia, is supposed to be for every veteran in yeah, every state, not just the, not just Rockingham, yeah, not right. just Western Australia. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be the whole of Australia. Yeah. So I, I was puzzled to s- understand why mm-hmm. they haven't grabbed this. Yeah, but I, I think what's going to happen is there's going to be an outshowing of pride soon. There's no two ways about that because... Mm-hmm. That's what this is, right? And it has to be looked at, not just for the veter- the Vietnam veterans, but for a, 
every other veteran that's out there who has been put in a position whereby they've had to get a, go out on the streets because I'm sure there's some oh, Iraq and <laughs> Afghanistan veterans as well. Absolutely, right? mate, because you don't come back from a war yeah. the same the as same you person. left. No, you don't. You're and right. this is what causes the family breakup. Yeah. Because they're not recognising each other and the issues they've got, mm -hmm. post-traumatic stress disorder, psychoenosis, mm -hmm. um, and a few other different types of problems that they have with mental disorders and things, you yeah. know, and, and there's just no support. Yeah, no, that's right. And it, sh it, ga it really rocks my boat, right. you know. And that's where we're going to try and bring this up in, and put it into the... Um, uh, into the four brands of everybody who's out there. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'll keep Facebook everything. Everybody right. needs to just Facebook the living heck out of it, yeah, and yeah. even hit hit the papers. Tell the story yeah. to the papers. This is what this is. Guy, why yeah. aren't you doing a story on this? Why aren't you doing the story on that? What what is taking so long? You know. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Now, I want to thank you just now. I, t I just want to tell our listeners now. Right, we've been talking. The for, I don't know, half an hour, maybe a bit longer. I haven't even queued up a song to play once we finish. That's how intrigued I've been talking to you. So I really appreciate what it is that you've uh, you've been able to tell us. Well, now. can I ask you to do one thing then? Yeah, go on then. Could you put on I Was Only 19? Who's that? I Was Only 19. Yeah, who who sings it? Um, who do Gurus, I think. Who do Gurus? I Was Only 19. I will find it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime... Um, we're going to wrap up the interview. I'll find the song, unless you want to talk for a minute while I look for it. Well, you go and have a look for right, it. Right, I'll do that. The song was called I Was Only 19. Right. And the song itself um, has been used for um, a lot of the military uh, events and things that go on because of uh, Vietnam. And um, most of the people um, who went to Vietnam were 19 and some were even younger than that. You know, I believe some were even 17. Yeah, well, they had um, the average age of the American uh, GI was 19 because mm. um, Paul Hardcastle sang uh, that song. Now, I've fo I found a version here, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try it, and uh, hopefully it's the right one. I'm sure it will be. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. Yeah, so I was just wondering how you were clicking that thing there and making it look yeah. so easy. And it's just it's talent, mate. Talent. Yes, talent. I know. Look, I love it. You know, you, you you're so talented. You, yeah. I've seen your work in photography. I've seen your work in your layouts and the way you've done things. Thank you. See, so you you know, I respect the fact that you've even asked me in here for an interview. Well, I mean, I wasn't prepared to not have you. I mean, I know that you know. Yes, we asked about you being here next week, but this this is such a an important. Um, aspect that we've got to get it out there as, as much as we can. Yes, that's no. why I ask the people out there who listen to Inspire Radio to um, spread the word. Yeah, you know? right. They come down if they want to. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's and open that's to exactly the public. Right. That's what that's what we've got to get mm. them out there. This it's not just the public, invited exactly. people; it's everybody who wants to yeah. be there. We've got um, um, part of a military band coming across from the island. I believe. We've got the Rockingham City Pipe Band. Right. And we've got uh, some of the sailors coming across to do yeah. present. Um, yep. The so doing the mark, do the forming. Yep. And, uh, yep. yep. We're going to do so, all that. And then we've got, um, uh, well, like I said, other dignitaries. Which and are, speeches which and stuff. Yep. And then a couple of presentations. Yep. And, but then yep. the unveiling. Then the unveiling. Yep. All right. So what we've got is uh, this song is called I Was Only 19. It comes from the movie Danger Close. All right, which was the Battle of Long Time. Yeah, so, that's the one. Right. So um, this is to Laurie, to Owen, to everybody else who's been involved in this project, and we will have Laurie back in next week, if that's okay. Yeah. And uh, in the meantime, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much.